Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and this is our sun, surrounded by the nearest stars to us. Now, today we're going to be talking about the concept of metallicity, and we're going to apply this concept in search of different exoplanets or planets outside of our solar system. Anyway, welcome to What the Math. So all of these stars that you see are actually the nearest stars to us, uh, or some of the brightest stars uh, next to our sun, and all of them have various um, elements inside of them. For the most part, most stars have hydrogen and helium, but uh, depending on the so-called metallicity, some of these stars might contain other elements as well. Now what exactly is this metallicity? Well, let me explain it to you in, in the following way. Now, right now, you're looking at an object that's not yet a star. It's basically a very, very large gas giant or um, a very large brown dwarf that's about to become a star when uh, some of these Jupiters collide with it. We're going to run this a little bit slower so you get uh, to actually see how this happens. Uh, but the reason I'm doing this is because I wanted to take a look at this composition here. So right now, this particular object um, has basically 100% hydrogen. In other words, it has zero metallicity. It's all entirely hydrogen and possibly helium. As it uh, combines with these Jupiters and as it becomes a star, it's going to start acquiring other elements. So here there's a bit of silicates, there's uh, some iron coming and possibly some water as well. And as this happens, this star will start changing its metallicity. Well, it's not a star yet, but it's about to become one uh, once it actually collides with more of these uh, Jupiters. So let's give it some time and um, let's change its metallicity. So in other words, metallicity refers to the um, non-hydrogen, non-helium of a star. And so in other words, what metallicity refers to is a concept of a uh, star's composition. High metallicity means that the star has many other elements except for hydrogen and helium, and low metallicity means it mostly has hydrogen and helium. Now, why exactly would we care about what a star um, contains inside of it? And so let's actually turn this object into a star finally, and there we go. So there is our star, and it is now going to be a star that has some metallicity. So as you can see, only 99.4% um, of the material here is hydrogen and I guess helium, whereas 0.6% is other elements. And so this star has about 0.6% metallicity. Now, why do we want to know this? Well, it's, there's actually several reasons why you would want to know metallicity of a star, but one of the biggest reasons is because it's an excellent predictor for whether a star will actually have planets around it. Why? Well, it's a really simple reason. The proportion of elements inside a star indicates what other elements may have been present in the formation of the star when it actually had a planetary disk orbiting around it. So inside of this planetary disk, the, uh, the proportion of non-hydrogen and non-helium is kind of correlated with the metallicity of star. So if this star has about 0.6% non-hydrogen on helium, it's very likely that the disk orbiting around the star had something very, very similar. And this, of course, shows us what kind of elements may have uh, been orbiting here and what kind of planets may actually have formed around this particular star. So this is a really, really cool concept in uh, astronomy that can be used to not only detect uh, various exoplanets, but predict what kind of exoplanets may be, may be orbiting around a certain star. So let's actually just maybe take a look at our own sun, for example. So we know for a fact that our own sun has um, something like 1.3% metallicity. So this is actually not very accurate. Um, its hydrogen and helium content is about 98.7% of total mass, and the rest is basically things like oxygen, carbon, and so on. Uh, so the metallicity of our sun is uh, definitely not 100%. And we know for a fact that there is at least four terrestrial planets, and there is um, two gas giants and two ice giants, and a bunch of other uh, dwarf planets and asteroids and so on. So basically, you can kind of compare the total mass of our solar system um, and for example, look at uh, things like composition of Jupiter and uh, notice that the actual metallicity of Jupiter is also not 100%, it's about 2% uh, 
in total because Jupiter also has silicates and other materials on the inside and see a bit of a correlation between things like gas giants, things like total mass versus mass of hydrogen and helium and then use this model to uh, look at other stars and try to predict what kind of planets those stars might have as well. So if you look right here, you'll notice that there's about 14 masses of Jupiter inside of our sun that, that are not helium and hydrogen. In other words, if I were to take out uh, this non-metal stuff out of our star and place it like just in orbit between Mars and Jupiter, for example, it would actually form a planet that I'm going to name Metallicity. Uh, that's that would be about 14 masses of Jupiter. And look how beautiful this actually is. Uh, so a lot of the material in, in the early solar system um, very likely was absorbed by our sun. And um, this could have been other planets, actually. This could have actually formed into other planets and may have been other planets that were eventually absorbed by our sun or may have been just particles orbiting around the solar system that were... Um, absorbed through 5 billion years of existence of our sun. But anyway, so this metallicity that I just placed outside of our solar system, but anyway, this metallicity that I just placed outside of our sun is an excellent indicator of presence of exoplanets. So, if we were to look at another star, and let's just go into the simulation here and find another exoplanet. For example, the nearest exoplanet to us, Proxima Centauri, we know that it has relatively high metallicity, even higher than that of our own sun. And we found at least one exoplanet orbiting around it, which is known as Proxima b, and it even has higher mass than our planet Earth. Okay, what about the recently discovered Trappist system? Trappist system too has a higher metallicity than our own sun, and we've discovered seven Earth-like planets orbiting around it. And as we keep looking for more and more uh, stars out there that have high metallicity, we are very likely going to discover more and more exoplanets orbiting around them. And what's really interesting is that this metallicity can even be used to predict the types of planets that are in orbit around those stars. So higher metallicity means you're more likely to find more gas giants. And this is actually a very interesting hypothesis based on the fact that we know uh, when when actual planets are formed and when the actual solar system develops uh, right before the star gets its um, fusion going basically right before the nuclear reaction kicks in uh, there's a lot of stuff that sort of orbits around it and this stuff um, forms into planets now if there is not enough uh, things that are not hydrogen and helium basically if metallicity of this formation ring is very low it's very likely that not many things will combine into each other. In other words, planets will not be formed very easily, and specifically large planets. If there is things like silicates and oxygen and carbon flying around here, it will very likely form into chunks much, much quicker. And these chunks that I've just placed in this particular solar system will then um, collect all of the remaining hydrogen and helium in the area around them and then turn into really, really, really massive gas giants. So here we can actually turn Haumea that I just placed here into a super, super massive gas giant that uh, would indicate the formation of a, a typical gas giant. So here I actually just have to remove some of the um, silicates and turn them into hydrogen. And as you can see, it starts absorbing more materials that are around it. And um, the higher metallicity of this uh, formation ring, the more of these gas giants will be formed and the larger they'll actually get. However, if the metallicity is low, these objects will not be formed as quick. And uh, within about 5 million years, when the actual star starts getting its uh, nuclear reaction, when it basically turns into an actual star, which I'm going to do in a second by doing this. So as soon as it turns into a star, the um, flares from it and um, the variety of solar winds that the star says starts emitting disperses all of the gas that's left here and stops the production of any gas giants that have not been formed yet so in other words what happens here is this boom and all of the particles in dust will be deleted so the star illuminates all of the remaining um hydrogen and helium and it all basically flies away into our solar system so what's left here is the gas giants that have already been formed or various terrestrial planets and various um dwarf planets and uh planetesimals that will then form into larger planets but extra gas basically disappears 
And so this metallicity is a very, very important indicator um, in search for exoplanets and specifically for habitable exoplanets that we might be able to colonize one day. And there's a lot of papers in the last five years that have been released studying this in a little bit more detail, trying to understand how the actual composition of a star can predict and indicate what kind of planets might be orbiting around a specific um, solar system. So all of it is super, super important and all of it we're going to discuss in a little bit more detail in the future. But for now, all you need to know is that uh, recent discoveries like TRAPPIST-1 that made the news in uh, 2017 are essentially really, really good models for us to study because their metallicity is very, very high and they do have quite a lot of planets orbiting around them, whereas stars with low metallicity have almost no planets at all. We'll talk about this in more detail in the future videos and in the next video tomorrow, you'll also find out about various types of stars and various metallicity that they actually have. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back and you're going to learn something else interesting about space, sciences, or maybe we'll just play a video game. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, subscribe if you still haven't, and as always, bye bye. And before we finish this video, let's maybe, just maybe, explode this beautiful star. Oh, not exactly what I wanted to do, but still looks beautiful. All right, I'll see you guys later. Space out. Bye-bye.